Good evening and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for this public hearing tonight. My name is Ryan Blazik. I'm with Eagles Environmental Support Division. I'm just going to be helping to moderate this hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing for the Makatawa Bay Yacht Club, uh, Makatawa Park Township, uh, Ottawa County. But before we get too far, uh, just have a couple quick items to go through. Uh, this is our agenda uh, for the evening. Just want to go through this quickly. We're going through the introduction right now. Uh, the big thing to keep in mind is this public hearing is going to kind of be in two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be an informational session where the uh, applicant or the applicant's representative uh, will have an opportunity to present the project uh, and the application. Uh, it should go about 10, 15 minutes max. Uh, and that'll be followed by a question and answer session. So you'll have an opportunity to ask a question uh, on this application and project. Uh, we're also going to talk about ways to submit a, an official comment. And then the second part is the official hearing portion. Now, that's where you're going to have an opportunity to make a statement for the record uh, on this project. Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, who to contact with further questions and where to find other information. Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, attended a hearing like this for, from us, uh, all lines are going to be muted during the hearing. You'll obviously be able to uh, unmute your microphone to give your statement and to ask a question, but you can also submit a question at any time uh, before the question and answer session using the question box or the Q&A box in your go-to toolbar. Uh, and we'll talk about that again once it gets to that question and answer portion. And then also we are recording this hearing just so you're aware. Uh, it will be posted on our YouTube channel in a couple of days so you can review it again at that time if you'd like. At this time, I'd like to invite Lauren and Audrey, our other Eagle staff who are on the line tonight, to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Lauren Scherzinger. I am the district representative for Southern Ottawa County out of the Grand Rapids District Office in the Water Resources Division. Good evening, everyone. I'm Audrey Kirk. I'm the district supervisor, one of two for the Water Resources Division in Grand Rapids. I lead a team of 11. We cover nine counties and six different environmental protection statutes. Excellent. Thank you, Lauren and Audrey. Um, we're going to move on to the next portion here, and this is the kind of the informational session we're going to start. And it looks like we have Grant Cheney, uh, who's the spokesperson for the Makatawa Bay Yacht Club in our audience. And what we'll do is we're going to unmute Grant uh, and find him. Oh, Grant, looks like you're unmuted on our end. Yep. All right. Can Excellent. you hear me okay, Ryan? Yep, I can hear you. Do Is there anybody else we need to unmute tonight? or? Um, I don't think so at this time. I mean, I suppose that could change, but I, I, think, I think I'm all set here. Okay. Okay, perfect. I have your slides. Um, if you just want to let me know when to change to the next slide, uh, that would be great. And then if you can, again, just keep it to 10, 15 minutes max. Yeah, I sure. I, I practiced it a couple of times. Should be, should be 10. So, uh, okay. try to keep within your time frame there. So first of all, um, thank you, Ryan. I haven't met you before. And thanks to Lauren and Audrey as well for hosting this, putting it together. Um, am I on video too, or no, I, I no, just, just audio. Just, we have just you. Audio. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Um, I'm Grant Cheney says on the screen there. Um, representing the Makatawa Bay Yacht Club Board of Directors. Um, if you want to pull up the slides, you can, they, they kind of correlate with my remarks here, obviously. Um, if you want to just go to the next slide, that would be great. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of history as I was asked to do about the Yacht Club. We were founded in 1899, so our 125th anniversary is just around the corner here in 24. It's pretty remarkable, uh, the longevity we've had. Uh, we're a nonprofit with uh, deep roots in sailing and competitive sailboat racing. Um, we, we have a four paragraph mission statement, but I boiled it down to these two sentences from that mission statement, which are on the screen now. Um, I'm going to read them out loud, even though you can all read. Uh, you know, we strive to be the community's preeminent resource for all forms of boating, nautical education, including seamanship, cruising, racing, and sportsmanship. You know, the simple essence of our club is members enjoying their families and friends through their common love of boating, water-related activities. Um, and kind of simply put, you know, this potential slip project enhances our membership experience, enables us to expand our mission uh, with community engagement, 
via experiences on the water. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide. Just gives you an idea a little bit of what I was covering there in terms of our longevity. Uh, describes our location. We're at the very west end of Lake Makatau. I'm guessing everybody on this call knows exactly where we are, but uh, we're, we're out very near the channel entrance. Uh, on a nice piece of property on the, the south end of Lake Makatawa. Uh, a lot of history with, you know, the tourism and boating in the area. Uh, just some kind of, you know, takeaway points there on that slide. If you want to go to the next slide. So in, in support of, you know, this request, um, you know, some of the reasons I'm just going to cover here um, as to why we're looking to explore the potential of slip additions. Uh, you know, MBYC, Makatawa Bay has been very fortunate enough to modernize our clubhouse facilities and our grounds uh, over the past 10 to 15 years. But we also have current members who have been on the slip waiting list for years. Uh, we're currently at 55 current members on the waiting list. Um, and, and the turnover of those slips has been getting longer and longer. And for the first time in our history, our dry sail area, where we also have boats, um, and, and really all that is, uh, for those of you who don't know, dry sail, it's an area of the parking lot designated to store boats that go in and out of the water. And that area is now full too. Uh, and we have a few boats in there that would normally be in a smaller slip or lift if there was room. Um, in addition to that, MBYC has very little room for visiting boaters and sailors from other yacht clubs in the Great Lakes, you know, wanting to exercise their reciprocating or visiting rights at our club, or even current members that, that have boats elsewhere that want to stop at the club and visit or participate in events. Um, we just have very limited space. So the, you know, the proposal that we're looking at, you know, the footprint that we're exploring uh, allows us to add slips in some wall or well space, as we call it, which would be more accommodating to these visiting boaters. Um, you know, right now we have a limited space that can maybe handle a handful of medium sized power boats or sailboats, and we have a two hour time limit just because that space fills up so fast. Um, and here on this slide, you see a picture of uh, one of the recent national championships we just hosted for our juniors. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. You know, we've hosted many national sailor events over our 123 year history, and that's primarily been affiliated through our junior association. And they use smaller dinghy style boats as kids would. And our, and our current space is really adequate for those types of events. But, you know, our club has always inspired to host larger national events with larger boats, and, and we just simply don't have the space. Um, we, we'd aspire for, like I said, national or or even global championship type events. Uh, but even just as one example, there, there's a regional event called the Queen's Cup and every year they race from Milwaukee South Shore Yacht Club to a destination in West Michigan. Uh, it's a great event, a couple hundred boats and we haven't been able to host that in a long time because they're asking us to have spaces for a hundred boats. Not necessarily slips, but well or wall space in addition to slips. And, um, you know, that would be an exciting opportunity if this project were to go forward, uh, we would put ourselves in the running for hosting the Queens Cup. And that would be, you know, exciting for the entire, you know, Lake Makatawa sailing community, just not, not MBYC. Um, you know, and obviously, as you see on this slide, there's, there's a revenue piece to this, right? And, and our boat owners, the people that, that use the slips in our dry space area are the core of our volunteerism, which really drives our club. I mean, everything about what we do with collegiate sailing, the five high school teams that, that call you know, our junior association their home for their sailing activities is, is really made possible by our volunteers, which again, you know, are primarily our boaters, um, power and sail, and you know, expanding this, um, uh, uh, area of slips obviously helps us in the revenue and then builds that base of volunteers and boat owners so that we have an even bigger community to support you know all of our on the water endeavors um, you know so obviously these new slips would be an excellent source of revenue to kind of build that foundation and give boaters 
access to the water that then become volunteers, um, you know, that are already in our membership. Everything we're talking about is for our current members. Um, and, and really, I kind of the last point of this is, you know, having a boat in a slip or in a dry cell area is still a really relatively affordable way for our members to experience the water. Um, you know, certainly lakefront property is at a premium and scarce and um, you know, with the, the, the slips in the area having backlogs, uh, we have close relationships across the lake with a couple of marinas and they have back lists or backlogs, slip waiting lists as deep or deeper than ours. Um, and so this is just, like I said, a relatively inexpensive way for people to enjoy the water and be on the water with their boats versus, uh, you know, being fortunate enough to have property of their own. So those are kind of the key highlights. I think you can go to the next slide here. Here's an aerial shot, just for those of you who've never uh, been fortunate enough to visit us out there. Um, aerial shot looking, you know, south at the club and the current footprint that we have. You can go to the next slide, I think. And then there's an overview of the application we submitted. And, and I'm basically, you know, the rest of this presentation kind of gets into the nuts and bolts of, um, you know, some of the um, questions that were asked originally about surveys and, and a prior survey and we can go through those but I just wanted to wrap up you know kind of the the pitch if you will the introduction as to why we're pursuing this and that is you know we're we very much want to define what what's within our rights you know working with DK and you uh, to, to potentially build so then we can you know discuss with the membership do what's right for the membership and you know, present a, a firm proposal. Obviously, anything we do has to be approved by the membership. So, you know, we're looking for that guidance, and, and we feel that this is within our rights. But we know there's questions, and we understand that this process could result in changes. And you know, that's what we're doing here this evening. So, um, with that, I think you can go on to the next slide. So, like I said, I'm I'm now skipping from kind of the introduction. You can stop me if you want, Ryan. But you know, this kind of goes into um, you know some of the documents that were submitted and some of the questions that were raised because of that. And and again, feel free to stop me. But this this addresses a, a prior riparian um, uh, survey that was done. There is a typo on the slide. It says November 4, 2002. Really, it's 22. Um, we we provided our survey, um, surveyor, the old documents from, as you can see here, 2005. And there was a discrepancy around that. And it really came down to the way that surveys are conducted and the 90 degree angle from the property. It's all written here. And if you go to the next slide, you can kind of see the verbiage for yourself. Um, and, and the fact that he reviewed these documents with his current survey, which is overlaid on those sketches, which you have, which were part of the original posting for the, for the public hearing. So this is just, these, these images are taken from that document. And if you wanna go ahead and, and kind of skip down to the last slide there, um, these are the surveyor points of the current survey of 22 um, that they explain that because of the difference in the way that survey was done in 2005 versus today, that they feel that our, our sketch, our proposal is well within the uh, riparian rights uh, per his survey. And the, and the last slide then, and again, try not to get in the weeds here and stay within my time limit. That's a repeat of, of the new vision, the enhancement. On to the next slide, sorry. The very last slide, I believe, is his letter. So that's their letter explaining those prior slides that you saw, um, you know, with regard to the, the survey discrepancy from 2005 to 2022. And the prior slide, Ryan, was just kind of a highlighted recap of, you know, what we're trying to do here, what we're trying to accomplish. So it was a summary of some of the things I said. So um, that was kind of my introduction to ask for. I think I was under 15 for sure, maybe even 10. So no, our, our timing is good. All right, yeah, thank you for that presentation, Grant. Um, so what we'll do right now is we'll kind of move right into the question and answer, you know, part of this informational session. Uh, we have, um, you know, until about 6.30 that we can answer or take your questions. We can either do that in the Q&A box, 
You can type those in. Uh, if you'd like to ask them verbally, you can click the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Or for those who are calling them by phone, you can select pound two on your receiver and that will raise your hand and zoom and we will unmute you. Um, so we'll go through any questions here. Once we are through the questions, uh, what we'll do is just move on to the next part of the hearing tonight, which is kind of that uh, official hearing portion where you'll, where you'll be able to make your statement. Uh, so are there any questions, I guess, at this point um, before we move on? Again, I'll, the, you should see the different ways to do that on your screen, the Q&A box. You can raise your hand in Zoom, or you can select pound two on your receiver. And I'm not seeing, I'll give you a couple more seconds here, but I'm not seeing any questions that have come up. Here we go. Uh, one just popped in, got a couple popping in now. So um, what about parking? Parking right now is at a premium. Senator, can you mention or anything to say about uh, parking as it relates to the application or permit or? Sure, Ryan, can you, am I still unmuted? Just checking. Yeah, yeah you're okay. unmuted. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, because we're, we're talking about current members, um, you know, these are people that are already utilizing the club. Uh, people on the wait list are, you know, boaters, obviously. They're, they're participating and utilizing the club. Um, I'm certain that, you know, there would be some additional parking concerns, um, you know, certainly with regard to very busy weekends and things like that. You know, we, we have, you know, been paying attention to that. We have, you know, a cap on our, on our membership because of that. We, we don't want to create any parking problems. And we've discussed this at length. And again, it, it kind of depends a little bit on the scope of the project that we end up getting approved. But, um, you know, because these are current members, we're not expanding our membership. You know, we're not expanding you know, boat ownership necessarily. We're just looking to, you know, facilitate those current members. So we don't anticipate any any additional strain on our parking. Okay, thanks for answering that. And then I have kind of a separate but related question, specifically thinking of parking, but what, what are your plans for the rest of the site? And then that's probably for you, Grant, too, I'm assuming. Um, can you just ask to kind of elaborate on that a little bit. I'm not sure I understand well, the rest I can, of the site. I can just read what I, what are the, what are your plans for the rest of the site, specifically thinking of parking that will be required? So I think you already kind of addressed the parking part of that. I guess I just was wondering if there's anything else you wanted to say. Um, you know, I think, I think I kind of touched on that a little bit. I mean, you know, part of the thinking with, you know, the, part of what spurred this was the fact that our dry seal area is full. And again, there, there's dinghies in there that are never going in slips. So again, that's the parking lot, right? It's the shared space for the parking lot. Um, we could go back and I could use the pointer on the aerial, you know, to show you where that is. But, you know, I think people are asking these questions, know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, we have boats in there that could be on a lift, could be in a slip, recover a few parking spaces in that regard. But again, I, I would go back to, you know, we're not adding members, we're not adding new boat owners. This isn't an expansion in that regard. This is just servicing, you know, the the, the demand, I guess, that we have currently. So I, I think that's the best way I can answer that. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. And then uh, who at the Megatawa Bay Yacht Club created the proposal? I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, I, I don't know. I think you'd sp speak to that question. Sure. Um, you know, we, we leaned on, we have a, a board of directors and, and a couple of committees that are responsible for different areas of, you know, function at the club, right? So we've got um, a docks and grounds committee. Um, you know, we have an executive committee, we have a board of directors. Um, so we coupled with DK Construction, who has obviously, you know, way more experience than any of us in this area. And, and we looked at options, you know, what can we do? I mean, obviously, you know, we're still a pretty small club. Um, we, we, we don't have the, the, the foresight or the bandwidth to talk about removing what we have. So we looked at what we have, what we could possibly add that we felt like fit in our footprint, um, you know, our repairing rights. And really, we just came up with the best way to kind of maximize that space, um, you know, recognizing full well that um, when working with our members, that you know there that there could be um, you know a reduction in scale. We may do part of it. Um, you know the permit I understand is good for five years. We may defer some of it. You know we 
we really want to engage our, our membership, but we understand from working with our partners and the people that looked at this at DK that, you know, this, this project could change because of this process. So obviously we didn't engage early on with the entire membership until we know what we can propose. Um, so it was a number of people. I, I would honestly say that, you know, DK provided probably the most guidance in terms of, you know, where to be, what we can do and, you know, working with the riparians, the setbacks, and you know, the turning radiuses. I mean, this was already revised once just because of some good feedback we had on, well, you know, you can, if a boat's coming in the slip this direction, it can't be this close to the line, et cetera, et cetera, which, you know, we didn't know at the onset. So we wouldn't be surprised if it changed a little bit more because of that. Okay, thanks. And this this question is somewhat, you've kind of addressed it and it's already it's kind of piggybacking on that last one, but the question was why why hasn't the board sought feedback or surveyed its members on the proposal? And I think you touched on that. Anything else you wanted to say though, as it relates directly to that question? Um, yeah, I mean, I sorry to be redundant, but I would just say we we felt that we're putting this in the exact order. And again, there's people helping us and talking, um, you know, through the process that we feel this is the right order, you know, to kind of establish this, then, you know, engage with the membership. I mean, obviously there's, you know, um, there's going to be opinions, uh, you know, pros, cons, we're never going to get hundred percent of our membership to see, you know, one way or the other, but, you know, we, we need a majority of our members to approve this actually a two thirds majority. So we would go back to them and say, okay, We've worked through these issues. We've addressed repairing rights. We've, you know, worked with, you know, defining we're this far away from the channel, et cetera, et cetera, which are all in those dimensionals. And because of that, you know, we can do this and we can do this and we have five years and how would we finance and all that stuff. We have many options to do that, but we just felt that this permit, which is all we're looking for at this time, you know, the ability or the permission to do this, then we could take and get proposals with our membership, you know, collaboratively, not just like, hey, guys, here you go. You know, we, we really wanted to, to take that approach. And we, we were under the impression where we're doing that in the right order based on some other people's experiences. All right, thanks. Um, how are you going to deal with increased dredging to the East Docks? I'm assuming in, increased dredging needed. Just, it just says, how are you going to deal with increased dredging? stocks yeah and i mean that's a really good question and and, the, and that would again come down to um you know what we end up uh proposing uh to the membership and working with the membership on we you know we feel that for example that east side you know maybe something that you know maybe doesn't meet all the members needs and we you know talk about that because there is there's water issues over there and there's congestion issues um but Again, that's something that we wanted just to define our position and say, well, yeah, it fits within the envelope. There's, there's nothing, you know, you're not encroaching anybody's rights and, you know, we're all good with it. And then, and then have that conversation. I, you know, I think that that would be one of the things that we would discuss at one of our membership meetings. We have two a year, one in May and one in uh, September. Okay, thanks, Grant. Um, we can also take questions on the application process or other items related to the application. I've got one more here just so we, that people know where we're at in case they have other questions, you can type them in while we're answering this one. Uh, since the site plan will need to be revised in order for this to go forward and the township is interested in understanding how you're planning, uh, in understanding, how are you planning to approach this? I can read that again. Since the site plan will need to be revised in order for this to go forward and the township is interested in understanding, how are you planning to approach this? Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything you can speak to, up to that. Uh, you yeah, can't see of, my face, but your face looks a little bit confused like mine. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe if you could, if whoever typed that could oh, actually looks like their hand is raised. We'll allow them to talk. All right, Maiko Weiss, you're unmuted. You can ask your question to elaborate. Hi. Thank you. This is Mika Weiss. Um, and I'm with Park Township. I'm I'm not sure if you're aware that this will have to go through the Planning Commission at Park Township as well. Um, parking has been one of the ongoing issues with past uh, applications and parking requirements are generally in marinas tied to the number of slips that are available, among some other things. And so um, that was my the gist of my question is since this needs site plan approval, it's going to need revision at the township level. 
Um, there are different orders to do this in, so uh, doing this with Eagle first is is acceptable, is fine. Um, but wondering a um, little bit, a little bit concerned maybe um, if there's an understanding of uh, the need to go through that process at the township level as well. Yep. Could you just uh, uh, say that name one more time, just so I know who's asking that question? Yep, Mika White. Thank you for the question, and yes, we're definitely aware of that. And I would only say that. Um, you know, that comes down to what our final proposal would be. The, this is not, we are not saying this is exactly what we want to do tomorrow. And uh, we are, we are defining um, what we are able to do. And I, I would fully expect that it, you know, changes and we would certainly, you know, address that with the township. I mean, we don't have a plan because this was our first step, right? I mean, to try to figure out um, there was uh, an understanding that, you know, um, that this would allow us to have that conversation with our membership. And, and you're certainly right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a question. There's, there's density there. It's a, it's a small area out there in the West. Or there's no question. Um, so, yeah, we, that would be part of our plan. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thanks for the question, Mika. All right. Um, got another question here. All right. Um, this one's for Eagle staff. What would be the key issues from Eagle in considering approval? So, if Lauren, you want to take that or? Yeah. So, um, we have kind of outlined guidance for marina expansion. Um, it's been something that we've had to deal with in the past. So, we try to focus on. Uh, is it within their riparian rights? Does it meet all setback requirements? Do they have a pump out agreement, which is something that we've been working through for um, like through the permitting process. Um, we try to find a layout that will minimize resources to the best ability and kind of in the end, hopefully not impact the resource um, while still providing a public service. And yeah. I don't know if you, you have anything to add, Audrey. <clears throat> No, I think you covered it well. It is, uh, again, it's an environmental protection statute that we are reviewing on. So we are very concerned about the potential for negative impacts to the water body. Um, but with that being said, we certainly do issue a lot of um, a variety of permits. So it is finding that balance of acceptable impacts um, with providing services and allowing people to exercise their riparian rights. Excellent. Thank you, Lauren and Audrey. I have a couple more questions left, and I think I'm going to kind of com combine them. Um, <clears throat> aren't necessarily related to the scope of the hearing, but um, Grant, if you want to take a stab at at these last two before we move on. Uh, would adding slips de decrease the number of dry sale slips? And then the second part is again related to parking. Where would more parking spots be added? Uh, either one or 50. Start, st say the first part again. I didn't yeah, know that. Would, would adding slips decrease the number of dry sale slips? No. Okay. And then the second part, where would you add more parking spots? Either one or 50. I don't know if that means a number or if there's something that you can relate that to at the site. Um, yeah, we, we have not even addressed additional parking, adding parking. The only thing I can say is we, we have talked about opening up what are dry sale spaces to parking spaces because they're different. I mean, they're laid out differently at our club. So if we were able to accommodate boats in the water on a lift, um, you know, that would help us with a few parking spots but again i'm i'm uh you know i'm, I'm just gonna refocus that a little bit just because we're we're not really since we're not adding members and we're not adding users to the club these are these are all people that you know want it be on the water and use the club that are using the club so i mean it hasn't been a real focal point for us because um you know we're not there yet we we don't know exactly if these number of slips is what we're ending up with or if there's a lesser number of slips we certainly know there's not going to be more but you know we we would then have to say okay um you know egle has worked with us they've defined this they've addressed the water concerns the things you just listed off preparing rights 
you know, we work with the members and um, we say, okay, uh, I mean, just to, you know, pick a number. What if we ended up with 20 slips? Well, you know, we, of the West side, say, just to use an example, the, the, the finger that goes off the West, I mean, there's probably 22 slips there. What if we ended up with that? I mean, we, we don't have really any additional parking concerns. If the members were really excited, you know, 90% of them are behind 52 slips. Well, then we're probably going to have to take a little deeper look at that, which would involve the township and other uh, stakeholders as well. There, there's no question. We're not looking past that. We just haven't got to the point where we know that we're talking about X, Y, and Z boats and X, Y, and Z spaces uh, in our dry sale area or parking lot. So uh, again, I, it's definitely part of the process. We just haven't, we're not really quite there yet, I don't think. All right, yeah, thanks, Grant. I think that is a, a good wrap up for this Q&A part. Um, this informational session It's time to move on to the next part. So I appreciate your presentation, answering those questions, um, and all of you who asked those questions. And thanks, Audrey and Lauren, as well. So with that, we're going to kind of move on to the next part of this. Um, which is the kind of the official hearing part portion. But before we do that, just want to make sure you're aware that there are some other ways you can submit an official comment in case you didn't want to make a statement tonight or if you had anything to add after your statement. Um, you can do that via My Waters, or actually it's My Enviro now, um, but it is the link on your screen, the My Enviro link that's also going to be in your chat. Submission number HPKP6DJ. H3F3X, um, that should be going into the chat. And then also you can submit a hard copy by mail um, to Lauren uh, Scherzinger. Uh, and I'm gonna spell this out along with kind of a, give you this whole address. And uh, Lauren's last name is S-C-H-I-R-T-Z-I-N-G-E-R. -E and that's at the state office building, fifth floor. 350 Ottawa Avenue, that's O-T-T-A-W-A -A Avenue, Northwest, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49503-2341. And I will, just so you're aware, I'll show this slide one more time before the evening ends in case, uh, in case you missed it or in case you ch just change your mind and decide you want to submit an official comment another way. Uh, and the comment period after the public hearing will be open for 10 days, which is uh, December 18th, 2022. All right. And so at this point, I would like to invite Lauren to kick this off and read the opening statement for us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Scherzinger. I'm the district representative in the Water Resources Division of the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, also known as EGLE. I will be serving as the hearing officer for this public hearing on EGLE submission number HPK-P6DJ-H3F3X. With me tonight is Audrey Kirk, the Grand Rapids District Supervisor. To describe how this is going to work tonight, I will begin with some background information about why we are here tonight, I will then describe the purpose of the hearing and how your comments will be used. Following that, I will outline the procedures under which we will take your comments and then describe what will happen after tonight's hearing. It will then be time for you to provide comments and we will spend the majority of the time tonight listening to those comments. At the end of the hearing, I will read the closing statement. By way of background information, the Water Resources Division is responsible for administering a variety of programs that help protect inland lakes and streams, wetlands, floodplains, sand dunes, and the Great Lakes. These programs regulate certain activities such as dredging, filling a lake, stream, or wetland, constructing a dam, constructing a marina, placing shore protection, or constructing docks, and building in a designated critical sand dune area, wetland, or floodplain. The law governing those responsibilities is the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, 1994 PA 451 as amended. We are here tonight because of the Makatawa Bay Yacht Club has proposed the following to facilitate the addition of 37 40-foot boat slips and 13 50-foot boat slips for a total of 50 additional boat slips to their existing 77 boat slip marina. They will construct two approach docks, two head docks, one tee dock, extend an existing tee dock, construct 24 finger docks, remove six 12 inch wood spring pilings and install 57 additional 12 inch wood spring pilings. 
In order for a permit to be granted, EGLE must find that the proposed activities described in the public notice meet certain criteria as set by Part 301 in the Lakes and Streams of Act 451. In general, we must consider the effect of the proposed project on the stream in the lake or wetlands. When reviewing an application for a permit under the provisions of Part 301 in the Lakes and Streams of Act 451, Eagles is charged with making the following considerations as required by Part 30105 or Part 301. The department shall issue a permit if it finds that the structure or project will not adversely affect the public trust or riparian rights, and the department shall not grant a permit if the proposed project or structure will unlawfully impair or destroy any of the waters or other natural resources of the state. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to give anyone interested in the Nakatawa Bay Yacht Club's application an opportunity to provide information that Eagle can use in making the decision whether or not to issue a permit. Please recognize that Eagle can only use the information you provide if it relates to criteria that Eagle must use in making that decision. Some of you may simply want to express your support or opposition to the project. We will happy to make note of your position, but please understand that EGLE is by law not allowed to base our decision on whether or not there's widespread support or opposition to the project. In just a moment, I will outline the procedures we will use for taking your comments. But before I do so, I need to mention that the notice for the public hearing was published in the Holland Sentinel on November 27, 2022. As we discussed at the beginning of the informational session, if you have a comment to provide, raise your hand in the Zoom toolbar to ensure that the hearing is conducted in a fair manner, we will follow these steps. First, the applicant and or their consultant has already had an opportunity to describe the proposed project. Second, we will call on those who have had indicated in their registration that they would like to speak. After that, we'll call on those that raised their hand in the Zoom toolbar that they would like to, or that they would like to make a comment if they haven't already been called upon. As a reminder, if you're participating in this hearing by telephone only, follow the directions of the monitor moderator on how to identify that you would like to make a comment. You may also submit your comments to EGLE via MindFire portal or US mail. When the comments have been completed, we will ask if anyone else would like to make a statement. When your name is called, the microphone will be muted. <sighs> will be unmuted. As you begin your comments, please state your name and any group or association you may represent. Each person will be given four minutes to make their comments. We will indicate to you when you have a minute left. Please begin wrapping up your comments and end within the allotted time. If need be, we will indicate when your time has ended. I ask that we all be courteous and respectful to one another tonight. Please also recognize that Eagle staff is here tonight to provide a fair opportunity for you to express your comments on the proposed project and listen to those comments. The hearing is being recorded and your comments will be part of the information Eagle will consider in making its decision on whether or not to issue a permit on the proposed project. The public comment period for this public hearing is open for 10 days from the date of the hearing, ending on Sunday, December 18, 2022. Additional information and comments submitted in writing during the 10-day public comment period will also be considered in Eagle's decision. Following the close of the public comment period, Eagle will make a decision to either issue a permit for the project as proposed or with modifications or send a letter of denial. You may find out that the decision or what the decision is by checking Eagle MindVirus portal website and searching for the application number hpk-p6dj-h3f3x. Thank you for your attention. We will begin calling names of those who have indicated that they would like to make a statement. Yeah, thanks for reading that, Lauren. Uh, like Lauren mentioned, I have a list of names here of people who, during registration who indicated they want to make a statement. We'll start with those list of seven names. I'll read off the person's name and then I'll let you know who is up next just so you can prepare yourself uh, for making the statement. Everyone will have uh, four minutes, you know, so we'll call your name, we'll unmute you, you can unmute yourself, you can make your statement. I'll give you a one minute heads up that, you know, you have one minute left. Um, and also just so to be fair and equal for everyone, it'll be one comment uh, per person. Um, and uh, and we'll all we'll end at four minutes for everybody. And then after we get through the list of names, uh, anyone who would like to make a comment can raise their hand in uh, in Zoom at the bottom of the screen to see the hand icon. You can raise your hand in Zoom. 
Or if you're on the phone and we do have some phone-in callers, you can select pound two, which will raise your hand in Zoom. And then we'll call on people who have their hand raised in turn. Everyone will have a chance to make a comment tonight. Um, and then also, just as a reminder, please list your name uh, and any association, any, any affiliation that you have. Uh, so with that, I think we're ready to roll. Um, the first person on my list uh, and who also has their hand raised is uh, Douglas Padnos. Um, Douglas, we're going to unmute you. And then after Douglas is uh, Wade Aldean. So Douglas, you can unmute yourself and begin when you're ready. Thank you. I'm Doug Padnus. I'm a neighbor to the club um, on the uh, east side of the, uh, the canal that goes into Lake Makatawa. And I've been here for, my wife and I have been here for over 40 years and we've been members of the club that entire time. Uh, the first issue I'd like to discuss is the parking even without 50 slips, the club is over capacity on parking. The staff is instruct, the employees in the restaurant are instructed to park on the very small lawn uh, green space that still exists. And, you know, with people going on a power boat or a sailboat, they don't really carpool to the club to do this. Uh, Grant, you sail on a boat on Wednesday night. How many how many uh, parking spots does that require for your crew to uh, participate? You know, these type of slips are large and we could figure easily that each slip could bring in five, five cars, you know, so it's not like, you know, the existing members are gonna, you know, use the limited parking. It's, it's a lot more than that. Um, I, I believe that the, the youth sailing that Grant also discussed uses the T dock and the launch and the uh, expansion on the east side to the south certainly encroaches that and makes it more difficult for to get around those slips. Uh, the, the other moving to the north, it narrows the, uh, the lake by a, a certain amount and the amount of recreational boats that go out to Lake Michigan, um, particularly on the weekends is, is huge. And by narrowing the lake at that portion, you know, it just becomes less safe. Um, we also ha are, have a shipping lane, uh, shipping channel, I should say, where, you know, uh, 600 foot freighters come in and moving out docks to the north would encroach on that shipping channel as well. Um, Grant, in your comments, you said that you thought this was the right order in which to do things. I, I feel it's the exact opposite of that. You know, we had a shareholders meeting in September. That's the same time frame that that the board was getting ready to launch this permit application, and no mention was made to the members whatsoever, which I think is totally inappropriate. Um, I have riparian rights too from the dock that I have on my property and you know moving in the direction to the east encroaches on that. The other concern I have is is that as a property owner in this area where the, these docks would block the view would potentially lower the uh, property value. You got one, uh, one minute left Doug. I, I that that concludes my remarks thank you. Yeah, thanks for your comments. All right, so next up is Wade Aldean. Uh, and after Wade is uh, James Stone. So Wade, it looks like you're unmuted on our end. You can unmute yourself and begin when you're ready. All right, thank you, Ryan, appreciate it. Um, I guess uh, I'm uh, Wade Aldean from Aldean Shipyard, neighboring business to the west, as well as uh, I live just to the west as well. Um, like Doug, I think this is kind of uh, out of order for asking for a permit from the DQ or Eagle uh, right now. Um, there's too many unknowns to move forward. You've just heard from a property owner on the east side and now a property owner on the west side um, that there are not repairing agreements in place uh, that accept this work. Um, so I think those would need to be in place for the per all the permits I've done. I've been required to uh, have those agreements in place before getting a permit. Um, additionally, for the parking, we've heard from Park Township that they need to approve a parking plan. 
uh, for any more slips. Um, I believe at their last expansion back in 2007, uh, Park Township uh, told them that they would not get any more slips because they do not have any more parking. Um, there's not membership approval as Doug uh, just mentioned. And even just at this September meeting, when this was all happening, they didn't talk to their membership. So do the membership even want this? Um, from my standpoint, uh, it's be doing a disservice to the majority of their membership as the majority of their membership uh, enjoy going to the dining room and, and looking out and seeing the water. Um, MBYC members and staff, Commodores, past Commodores have all made public comments for their neighbors or other uh, people's uh, applications for docks, et cetera, that they want this area of the lake as open as possible for those things they just talked about, their sailing programs with kids and adults, um, the view of the lake, getting in and out of the existing boat slips, the busy traffic. These are all things that uh, MBYC uh, has made statements about, um, and now they're doing the opposite. Um, so uh, they really need to talk to their membership and make sure that this is what they wanna do as well as uh, repairing agreement, parking, um, before it seems like uh, Eagle needs to uh, permit it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your comment, Wade. All right, uh, next up is James Stone. And it doesn't look like we have a James Stone who called in. If you're on the phone, James, select pound two and it'll raise your hand. We can call on you, um, James, or if you're under another name, on here. Otherwise, we're going to go to the next person in the line. And that uh, actually, uh, Grant, uh, Grant Cheney, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I have you on my list. Um, in case you wanted to make a statement, you can unmute your mic. I think that was just because I was planning to do the introduction. So I checked that box. But Okay, gotcha. Just wanted, just, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, um, and then, okay, so after Grant was uh, Holly Bowl, uh, followed by uh, Mika Weiss. So Holly, you can begin when you're ready. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I wanted to share my thoughts. Um, and first of all, I wanna say, you know, I appreciate Grant and um, some of the other board members in terms of thinking about how they meet the requests of so many people who wish to have slips at MBYC and thinking, creatively about that option. Um, however, I also would like to share that I'm, I'm quite concerned. I'm quite concerned about the process um, or the lack of the process in terms of involving the MBYC membership in this proposal um, with that understanding that, you know, there was a perspective taken on moving first with this hearing and then coming back to the membership but from my perspective, I think um, we really need that member feedback and um, to collect that to help um, provide guidance on the next steps regarding this proposal. My other concerns include the club community. Um, with our club community, it's a very unique place. It's not a marina, it's truly a club. And with that, um, or part of the reason why is that it's, um, it's it's close, it's close and connected. And I have concerns about increasing the blueprint of the slips and, and the impact that that may do, there may have on our club community. We um, have ladies racing right out in front of the club. Um, we've got a wonderful view of the water for our members who use the patio and the restaurant. Um, and I'm concerned about the increase in the number of slips impacting the enjoyment of its members. Like others have shared too, I'm also concerned about the parking situation. As we all know, that is a big concern because we do not have enough spaces right now. And I'm concerned about growing um, the number of boats and slips and what that does in terms of the parking. And finally, I wonder too about the facilities and wondering about the impact of additional slips on our current facilities that we have with our, our um, club, um, you know, our, our house, our clubhouse, and also the uh, locker rooms, and just thinking through the need for a perhaps study too on the flow 
of people throughout the grounds um, and the facilities that we have and how that impacts the greater membership as well. So thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Yeah, thanks for your comments, Holly. All right, so next up, uh, Mika Weiss um, and followed by Howard Fink will be after Mika. Uh, looks Mika, you can begin when you're ready. Thank you. Um, really made my comments during the question period. Uh, just wanted to be noted that um, this is going to have to go through the Park Township approval process as well. Uh, we also have concerns about parking based on past evaluations. And so just wanted to make sure that that was noted. Um, uh, Howard Fink is not going to be speaking tonight. He's at another meeting this evening. So um, yeah, I will update him on what happened at this meeting. All right, thanks, Mika. Um, yeah, Howard was actually gonna be the last person on my list, so I appreciate that. Uh, so at this time, if you haven't made a statement yet uh, and would like to, um, please raise your hand in Zoom. And again, you can do that at the bottom of your screen. You'll see the raised hand icon. You can click on that and that'll raise your hand and then we'll call on you in turn. And when we call on you, we will unmute your line so that you can begin your statement. Uh, if you're on the phone, again, you can select pound two if you would like to uh, make a statement and that will raise your hand in Zoom. And again, we'll call on you using the last four digits of your number. Uh, is there anybody else, I guess at this time, who would like to make a statement uh, for the record tonight? And while we're waiting a couple seconds here uh, to see, uh, just to let you know, we're gonna show that slide again of other ways to make a comment uh, in case you would like to add anything uh, to your comment or you prefer not to make a verbal comment tonight. So uh, I am not seeing any hands raised. So at this point, we are gonna move on to the next part of the hearing. And with that, I would like to invite Lauren to come back on and read the closing statement for tonight. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Thank you for your comments and cooperation. We appreciate your interest in the proposed project and that you took the time to be here tonight. As indicated at the beginning of the hearing, you may submit additional written comments until December 18, 2022. Following the close of the public comment period, we will consider all comments received and make a decision on the proposed project. Just to remind those that may still want to submit a comment, comments can be submitted via my Enviro portal or US mail. The hearing is now closed. Thank you again. All right, many thanks, Lauren. Um, and then just to kind of reiterate, I got to have that slide back up with the other ways to make an official comment. The um, You'll see the My Enviro submission number HPKP6DJH3F3X. Um, and then the My Enviro link is in your screen. It'll be, uh, it should be in the chat as well. And then also by mail, you can send those to Lauren Schertzinger, State Office Building, fifth floor, 350 Ottawa Avenue, Northwest, and that's O-T-T-A-W-A Avenue, Northwest, and that's Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49503-2341. Uh, and as Lauren mentioned, the comment period is going to be open for 10 days, which will be uh, December 18th. All right, if there are any additional questions or any questions that you have, you can contact uh, Lauren directly at 616-256-3851 or at churtsingerl at michigan.gov. And I'll spell that as S-C-H-I-R-T-Z-I-N-G-E-R-L at M-I-C-H-I-G-A-N dot gov. And and that will wrap us up for tonight. Audrey, do you have any final comments for us before we close it out? Yeah, thank you, Ryan. I just wanted to say thank you, everyone. Um, you could probably be doing many other different things than um, spending some time with us tonight, but I do really appreciate all the participation um, and I hope you have a good night. Yeah, thanks, Audrey. Yeah, thanks to all of our uh, Eagle staff, um, the applicant and all, our, all of our attendees tonight. The final thing I just want to close out with is just so you're aware, the closed caption recording of the uh, hearing tonight will be on our YouTube channel here in a few days. So you could check it out at that time. Uh, and I hope you all have a great rest of your evening as well. Um, thank you. <laughs>